Hello, you are watching Shalom World News. I'm Rory McLennan coming to you from Glasgow, Scotland. Here are the latest headlines from around the world. As the Catholic Church observes the Feast of Mary Help of Christians on Tuesday, May the 24th as a day of prayer for China, Pope Francis has said that he is taking the opportunity to express his spiritual closeness to believers in the communist nation. During his customary address after the Regina Chaley in St Peter's Square on Sunday, the Holy Father said that he is, quote, attentively and actively following the often complex life and situations of the faithful and pastors in China. The Pope added that he is praying for them every day. The Holy Father also mentioned the deep veneration Chinese Catholics have for Mary, help of Christians, their patroness in the shrine of Sheshan in Shanghai. He also invited believers to unite themselves in this prayer so that the church in China, in freedom and tranquility, might live in effective communion with the universal church. Winding up his visit to Ukraine, special papal envoy Archbishop Paul Gallagher said in an interview with Vatican Media that the Holy Father can still continue to play a significant role in the conflict there. He said, the Ukrainian people are truly a wounded people and at the same time very courageous and determined. The Archbishop said that one cannot overlook their suffering, adding that the commitment to resolve the conflict needs to be renewed through diplomatic and political dialogue. He also stressed that a new arms race should be avoided in Europe. The Vatican Foreign Minister also spoke about the role played by the Greek and Latin Catholic churches in Ukraine in reaching out to the affected masses. He also praised the work done by Poland in welcoming refugees. The prelate said that work in sustaining Ukraine needs to continue in order to help Ukrainians remain optimistic and faithful. During his address after the Regina Chaley on Sunday, Pope Francis affirmed the dignity of life while hailing a pro-life march that took place in Rome. He made this reference while greeting members of the Sheliamo La Vita, that is, Let's Choose Life Foundation, that carried out a march for life on Sunday, publicly affirming the sanctity of life from conception. The Pope bemoaned the modern-day mentality of treating life as a commodity at one's disposal. The pontiff said, Life is a gift from God, and it is always sacred and inviolable. His comments came after he reflected on the Gospel reading from St John, in which Jesus says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Thousands took part in the March for Life in Rome. This was the 10th edition of the annual pro-life event in Italy. Archbishop Samuel Aquila of Denver in the United States has expressed support for Archbishop Salvatore Cordiglione of San Francisco, who had sent a notification to Speaker of the House of Representatives Nancy Pelosi. Archbishop Cordiglione had said in his notification that Pelosi, who supports abortion and yet identifies herself as a Catholic, should not be admitted to Holy Communion unless she publicly repudiates her support for abortion, confesses and receives absolution. In his statement, Archbishop Aquila said he commends his brother Bishop for making such a courageous statement, adding that Archbishop Cordiglione is a shepherd with the heart and mind of Jesus, who leads others to Christ's mercy and love. He also made it clear that the Archbishop of San Francisco has made it clear that the issue is not about politics or enforcing church rules. Rather, it is all about love for the individual and for the community. Meanwhile, in the US, the Planned Parenthood abortion business has declared that it is closing down five of its facilities in Indiana, Idaho and Alaska. This announcement came after it was reported recently that the abortion facility chain has plans to close down five facilities in Vermont and New Hampshire on June the 12th because of staff issues and because of politics. There are reports that the nation's largest abortion firm is re-evaluating its facilities in a bid to consolidate and save funds, as several states are passing tighter anti-abortion laws. The firm explained that it is closing its Soldotna facility in Alaska, along with four others in Indiana and Idaho. Planned Parenthood is one of the main outfits that challenges pro-life laws in American states by filing lawsuits in federal courts. Heads of Christian churches in the Middle East have reiterated the need to renounce violence and fanaticism of all kinds, as well as discrimination based on religion, race, colour and gender. They made this statement during the recently concluded 12th General Assembly of the Middle East Council of Churches, or MECC, held in Egypt. 
It was attended by 17 patriarchs and leaders of 21 churches in the Middle East. The churchmen appealed for solidarity with believers who have been displaced and forced to leave their homeland. They also urged the international community to initiate efforts to facilitate the return of those who have left. The assembly also demanded a probe into the whereabouts of Christians who have been kidnapped and who have gone missing. They include two Archbishop of Aleppo in Syria, Paul al Yazji and Gregory Yohanna Ibrahim. The meeting was attended by Coptic Orthodox Pope Tawadros II, Chaldean Patriarch Cardinal Louis Raphael Sacco, and Jerusalem Latin Patriarch Archbishop Pier Battista Pizzaballa, among others. The church in the African nation of Malawi was blessed with 23 new deacons on Saturday. Seminarians from the Blantyre and Lilongwe archdiocese and six other dioceses received the diaconate, bringing them one step closer to the priesthood. During the ordination mass at Zomba Cathedral in the Dedza diocese, Bishop Peter Adrian Chifuqua welcomed the deacons for responding to the call of God to serve his church. The prelate also invited the attention of the faithful to an acute lack of funds and resources to train future priests, adding that foreign funding is no longer available for the church in Malawi. He appealed to the faithful to contribute magnanimously to train future priests. The bishop also said that the number of Catholics is growing, and so more priests are needed for pastoral assistance. Separately in Rome, as many as 24 deacons belonging to the Opus Dei personal prelature were ordained as priests on the same day. The deacons hailing from the US, Latin America, Spain, the Philippines and Switzerland were ordained by the bishop of the prelature of Yaoyos Canete Harochiri in Peru, Ricardo Garcia, in the presence of Opus Dei prelate Monsignor Fernando Ocariz. A Catholic Archbishop in the Latin American nation of Colombia has appealed to priests to conduct exorcisms on three Sundays as the nation is witnessing a proliferation of satanic cults. Archbishop Orlando Roa Barbosa of Ibagué instructed priests to carry out the exorcism of Pope Leo XIII in parishes on three Sundays in the presence of the exposed Blessed Sacrament. The prelate made this appeal as many satanic practices are being carried out by numerous cults such as drug cartels. The Archbishop said that the exorcism prayer of St. Michael, penned by Pope Leo XIII, is to be recited in the presence of the Blessed Sacrament. He said the deliverance prayer can ensure protection from the, quote, snares of the evil one who does not rest. And those are your latest headlines. Do join us again tomorrow for more. And remember, you can also visit swnews.org for more updates. Shalom.